Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. My name is Nathan Williams. Uh, I am a developer of the Aero software. Uh, this call is my weekly setup call. Uh, we had a push for an hour due to, due to some uh, things that came up. Thank you for your patience. Uh, this call is not a live trade session. Uh, this call is simply to uh, get set up with the software. So I'll be guiding you through uh, you know, how to navigate you know, certain things on the website as well as how to set up the software. Uh, how to use the you know part of the software, and then we'll go over one of the strategies. All right. So to start things off, let me pull up the website now. All right. So when you log into your dashboard, you want to click on these three icons here to bring up your menu over here on the side, and you go to AP Marketplace, Switch Tools. That brings you to this page here. Now, if you come to this page, and you see you don't have the Arrow software showing here then what you see is a bunch of empty boxes. They'll look like these software boxes, but they'll be grayed out. You just need to select, uh, select your tool, come in there, scroll to the very bottom and select the arrow, all right? Doesn't matter which box you choose, uh, just go ahead and select, all right? Uh, any box and then go down to the, and when you take you to the next page, you go down to the bottom uh, of that page and you find arrow uh, and you select that software, uh, so that you can actually have <clears throat> access to the Aero software. Great thing about Avoid Prime is they allow you to utilize their marketplace, which has multiple softwares. So you can, you know, again, you're here for the Aero software. Uh, so make sure you have that selected. And then again, if you want to uh, look into any of the other softwares, you know, definitely feel free to do so. The game is all about diversification. Right. So now that we get that out of the way here, and you have your uh, software here. If you already got it set up, you just want to select launch VPS. It's going to take you to your next page here. All right, go to VPS accounts, your access pass here. We can skip that for now. This here is your Avoya Prime Connect. This is how you uh, log into your actual software. So with Arrow, you can connect to your VPS so that you can connect through your back office. So through the actual website here. All right, that's not recommended. You know, uh, the screen is smaller. It's not a full screen. Uh, the resolution is not, is not as good as if you go through remote desktop. And also, um, it's a bit slower, so it lags a little more. If you need to reboot your VPS, you can reboot it inside your VPS. You can also reboot here. Now, what is the VPS? A lot of people ask. VPS stands for Virtual Private Server. So what the company gives you and what you're paying for on top of the software is a virtual private server, which is just a computer in the cloud. It is a Windows version computer that is in the cloud. So it's always on, always running, all right? Um, and so when you, log, <clears throat> excuse me, when you log into your software, you're gonna log into it through the virtual private server. Now, why does the company have a VPS? Well, two reasons. Number one, for you, all right? The VPS allows you to log into multiple devices. I have the VPS on my phone. I have it on my, my laptop that I'm on right now. I have it on my desktop. I have it on my uh, tablet. So at any given moment, if I want to log into my VPS from a different device, I can do so. If I'm out of, you know, away from my home, I can select one of my two mobile devices uh, or three because I've got a laptop with me. If I don't have any, I can log into somebody's uh, else's computer and log into my actual back office you know, and, and get the credentials and log into my virtual private server on their computer. So it allows you to be flexible in where and how you can use or have access to your software. It also allows you to receive notifications. Uh, this software has notifications that are sent out. If you had it loaded on your computer and your computer turns off, power surge, or you just turn it off for the day, you would not receive any notifications, all right? The virtual private server is always running. Therefore, 
you'll always receive your notifications and it'll always be available for you. All right. Next is the view password. So if you need the password for your VPS, you select that. You got to pop up here. Do not show anybody this information here. All right. I'm showing mine for uh, educational purposes. And the reason why you don't want nobody to show it is because they can log, if they have your information, they can log into your virtual private server and they can, you know, trade on your account and, and do damage or help you out, whatever the case may be. But you want to make sure that you protect your account information. Uh, I'm going to show it to you because I have mine hooked up to a demo account. So somebody can take my credentials, log into it, doesn't matter. They're gonna, it's only connect, thing that's connected is a demo account. So I'll never lose any money. Remote desktop connection is what I'm going to show you guys here. And I'll walk you guys quickly through how to set this up. So you select this here. Again, this is more information you do not want to share. I'm sharing mine because, again, if you ever log into mine, it only has my desktop version on there. I mean, I'm sorry, my, my demo version. A demo account is fake money. So I'm not worried about someone going in there and, and putting a trade in the wrong direction and blowing all my account. It doesn't matter because it's fake money that I'm hooked up to. My other account that I use that I don't show anybody this uh, you know, is where I have my real accounts hooked up to. So I, I say this to say, do not give this information away. All right, do not let anybody see it. All right, so this is the information you're going to need to log into your remote desktop. Your username, your IP address, your password, all right? Now, remote desktop. Let's go ahead and log into that real quick. Your remote desktop, if you have a Windows computer, all you need to do is go to the search and search for Microsoft Remote Desktop. It's already built in. If you have a Mac like I do, then you need to go to the um, App Store and download the Microsoft Remote Desktop. It is a free app. I will show you, give me one second here, I'm pulling up the icon for you. So you know what the actual uh, icon looks like when you are trying to get it set up. All right, this is the icon, all right? That icon is the icon for the Microsoft Remote Desktop application, uh, whether you're on your Android phone or your, your or Apple, all right? So whether you go to the Play Store or the iOS, you know, the App Store, all right? You will have, that's what the icon looks like. Microsoft Remote Desktop, download that. And then those three informations you need that we, we just saw to log in, all right? so. Uh, let me pull mine up here. This is what it looks like on the Mac. All right. You see, I'm logged into three different ones. These first two have my real accounts hooked up to them. This other one here that I'm on, that I was showing you guys, or I will show you guys, as on my demo. So you see, I've got multiple accounts here. So to add account, you want to hit this plus sign here. If you hit this plus sign. All right. Let me share that screen. When you hit that plus sign, it looks like this. <clears throat> All right, connection name, <clears throat> doesn't matter. You can call it Arrow, you can call it, you know, AP for Voyager Prime, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to call your actual connection name. So the name of this computer, you know, that comes in handy if you have more than one. All right, PC name, you see it says host name or IP address. All right, I showed you guys that on the website. I mean, also on the website, it's got your username, it has your IP address and your password. Here, you want to paste your IP address. Under username, type in trader. Under password, copy and paste the password there, all right? Once you've done that, and again, this is going to look slightly different if you have a Windows computer, but for the most part, it's generally the same. Once you've done that, you close that out, and voila, you will have that account pop up on here. All you need to do is double click on it, and it takes you to your account. So I'm going to double click on mine. All right, let me make sure. Let me log, share my screen for that account. And when you log in, it's going to look like this here. This is your Windows computer. And you can see you got a little start menu down there, little tabs. This is a Windows based uh, virtual private server. All right, if you've done it correctly and you selected your software, you see that number one up here in the top left hand corner will say arrow. All right, arrow, A-I-R-O, all right? 
as you see here, here's the other reboot button. You, need, you know, if you ever wanted to reboot, you make sure you reboot here and on the website where I showed you where to reboot at, all right? Also, once a week, typically on Friday after the market's closed or on Saturday or before you start Sunday, uh, you need to go, go through reboot, also go through and do a Windows update. That you have at least once every weekend, just to ensure you stay up to speed on the newest updates, all right? So it's just like a basic Windows computer, this virtual private server receives the same notifications for the updates, just like it does on a regular computer. All right. Next, you want to double click arrow, and that's going to open up your what? That's going to open up your virtual private. That's what I'm sorry, going to open up your MT4. All right. So it doesn't matter if you already have an MT4 you're logged into on another computer. You cannot add the software to that computer or to that MT4. You have to log into your VPS. You have to log into your broker through this MT4, and then you can place the software on this MT4 with your broker, all right? So you're still gonna have the same access to your same account as far as whatever broker you're using, but you just have to log into this MT4 that's on your VPS, not your personal uh, MT4 that's on your computer or on another VPS. It's gotta be this one to use the software. The second reason why the VPS uh, is given is to protect software. So for, you know, for like myself, uh, developers spend a lot of time creating these softwares. Uh, and unfortunately, we have some bad people that are out there that will find ways to steal the software and sell it as their own. All right. And so this protects us as well. All right. So once you've done all that and you've logged in, you'll know you logged in because when you log in, it'll say you have mail. All right. Also, in the bottom right hand corner down here, you'll see, you guys see my mouse here. You see you have red and green lines and, 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 and you show your, your speed per kilobyte, all right? So you see, that's when you know you're logged in. If it says log in or it says disconnected, uh, then you, you're not connected. You need to go ahead and log in. Now, if you're logging into your MT4 for the first time, you wanna to come to file, open an account, come down here to add new broker, type in that broker, let's and hit scan. Let's say you type in bear bull market. So I typed in bear bull market, I hit scan. It's gonna pull up the bear bull markets demo server, bear bull markets live server. So let's say I wanna, you know, again, you always wanna start off with a demo account first. Demo account is fake money. The software works, the strategies work. However, everyone needs uh, practice time to get it down. So you make sure your know, first week or two, make sure you're going through your demo account testing out the strategies, getting on a live calls, taking trades, just to see how everything works. Once you're comfortable, then you can come back and switch to your live account. So on your demo, you just wanna select demo, make sure it's highlighted in blue, hit next, and then select existing trade account. All right, you wanna select existing because you should have already went to that broker's website and created a demo account. They will email you your login, which is just your account number, and then they always give you two passwords. They give you a trader password and an investor password. You wanna put in your trader password here on a password. So your login is your account number, all right? Your account number, which is always a number. That's why I can't type in account number. Uh, and then your password is the trader password, all right? The trader password. The investor password is read only, which means you'll be able to see what's going on on the account, but you won't be able to make any trades. So when you guys start killing it in the market with Arrow, you can let your friends and family log into your account with your account number and your investor password so they can see how you're doing. They'll see the results and they'll be like, okay, great, I wanna join. And then they can join and go through this process as well. Once you've logged in everything here, hit finish. And then that's what you get a little pop-up that says, you got mail. And this right here, these numbers will pop up down here, you know, which is just your connection. All right, that's your connection status. So my connection status shows that I'm online. All right. All right, now once you've got that, and actually before we go moving forward, let me stop sharing and see if we got any questions here. And as you guys know here, <clears throat> if you got any guys any questions, make sure to uh, go to the uh, Q&A. So type your questions in the Q&A. And then, you know, uh, that way I can just look at the Q&A so we don't have people talking both in the Q&A and chat. 
All right. I will go through the money zone setup like I always do on every Sunday. So just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there when it's time. We'll get there when it's time. All right, we'll get there when it's time. We're gonna go through the whole setup process. Live trading guys and is in the uh, is in the uh, Telegram group. So if you're in the Arrow Bag Chat Telegram group, go to the pinned messages at the top of the Telegram, and you will have access to all the pinned important information. Uh, one of those posts is a is a uh, schedule for all the live sessions for the week. All right, you get all there's 11 sessions that we offer every week, 11 live trade sessions. So Monday through Friday. There's gonna be one to three sessions a day. All right. So make sure you're on you're you're in that group. Uh, to get in that group, if you're not in there, whoever helped you sign up on Arrow uh, can give you the link to that group. All right. Whoever helped you sign up with Arrow can give you the link to that group. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Let me. All right, join it. Bag chat. We just went over that, guys. Whoever helps you sign up, get with them. They can send you the link. All right, they will send you the link. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to the charts. All right, now, now we're back on the chart here. What you want to do is now it's we're gonna walk through setting up the software. All right, there are two types. All right, there's the software by itself, and then we have a dashboard. All right. I'm going to show you both. Some don't want to use a dashboard. Some do. That's fine. All right. So here's how you set up the basic software. All you do is you get a chart. So to add a chart, uh, you want to make sure you write underneath file. There's this white box with a green check mark. I mean, I'm sorry, green plus sign that says create a new chart. That's the name of this tab. Select that. Come down here and find one of these icons. All right. If you want to add an icon on here, so if you want to add indices, gold, or more Forex pairs, if you don't have the 10 Forex pairs that are recommended, what you want to do is go to View, Symbols, and then here, you'll be able to come out of here and find everything you need. Forex Majors, all you got to do is just double click on one of these, the, the icon until it goes from, so let me turn these off here. The only one on here that we use under Forex Majors is GBP USD. So if it's grayed out, double click on this box here and turn it from gray to gold. Then you can add it back, all right? Once you've done that, you close, you come here, all right? And under Forex Majors, there it is, GBP USD. All right, now there are 10 pairs that are recommended to trade with Arrow. Again, you can trade whatever you want. Arrow works with everything, but I recommend 10 pairs, all right? So I'm gonna add those 10 pairs onto this chart so you guys have those. And there, you see them all down here on the bottom. All right, so GBP USD, GBP Chef, GBP JPY, GBP NZD, GBP CAD, GBP AUD. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six Great Britain pound pairs, all on the M15. All right. Now, if you don't have all these icons up here, but you should have on the default, if you don't have them for some reason, go to View, Toolbars, make sure all four of these are checkmarked. And then underneath Toolbars, make sure these two are checkmarked. If you see those, if all those checkmarked, you should have all these icons showing. All right. And I'm using this here, these M1, M5, M15. These are your time frames. All right. So all I'm doing is changing each chart. And you see here, I have six charts down here. I can just toggle between each one of them by clicking on a different one. So you see all six of them now say the Forex currencies name, the Forex pair, and then what chart, what time frame it's on. All right. Those are six of the 10. The next four are Euro pairs, all right? So you come down, select on add new chart, Forex crosses, EUR GBP, EUR AUD, 
E U R J P Y E U R N Z D. Make sure you turn all those to M15 as well. And these are all 10 pairs that I recommend. Six Great Britain pound pairs, all right? And four euros. I recommend these pairs because they are the 10 pairs with the highest ADR in all the Forex. ADR is volatility. ADR stands for average daily range, which means it's the number of pips that a currency pair moves per day. These 10 move the most every day, giving you the best and highest probability chance to take profit with your trades. All right. Now, once you've selected everything, you want to come up here to this icon right here. It's the last icon on the chart. It looks like a little white box with a bunch of little squeaky lines on it. If you put your mouse over it, you see it says templates. All right, templates. Select templates. You should see blackout and you should see arrow. If you do not see arrow or blackout, if you see one of the other or if you see neither, you need to submit a ticket. All right. Let me show you where to submit a ticket at. All right. So we go to the website. We're here on the website. Come down here on your menu chart to support and select submit a ticket. Here is where you submit a ticket. All right. You submit a ticket there. Explain that on your arrow software, you do not have the arrow or the blackout templates. If it's just one, just show the one you don't have. If you don't have both, say both. All right, you need the templates there. All right. If you have them there, you're good to go. So if you just want to add the software, I'm just going to show how to add the software first. You select templates, hit arrow. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. There it is. Already built in for you. All right. Boom. Software is on your chart. All right. Now, this, if you want to monitor multiple pairs, what you have to do is have the software on all those pairs. All right. But it, it might get tedious because you might have 20 things you want to look at. All right. I don't advise having 20 different charts open. Uh, you want to make sure you only have a couple. That way you can concentrate on, on a couple pairs so that you don't miss trades. When you have too much open, you might miss a trade and try to chase it and, you know, find yourself losing money. All right. And so if you do like to look at or monitor one more than one pair uh, or more than a few, you can use the dashboard. The dashboard is created to actually monitor multiple pairs. All right. So all you want to do is open up a blank chart. So I'm going to use the very first one here. Doesn't matter what the time frame is. You open it up, come to templates, hit blackout. All right. Templates, blackout. Put this little gray uh, gray shade on there to cover the chart up. Next, underneath charts, you come down to this gold folder with the gold star. That is your navigator. Select your navigator. All right. When your navigator pops up, you want to come over here to expert advisors. All right. Expert advisors. Select the plus sign and you want to double click the arrow dashboard. All right. Double click arrow dashboard. Make sure all four of these are checkmarked. Enable alerts, allow live trading, allow DLL imports, and allow import of external experts. All four need to be checkmarked, all right? Next is inputs. Under inputs, here is where the magic happens. Now you can tell the dashboard what it is you wanna look at. Under pairs trading, double click on that. Select the drop down arrow. You can look at your own list. So if you want to create your own list, you can. That's what most do. I do the same. You can look at the core seven. The core seven are the seven most traded Forex pairs there are. All right. They're the core seven. Or as some brokers call them, uh, the, um, and you guys can see here mine. Can't see this. Mine calls them uh, Forex majors. So it's the seven major pairs. All right. Uh, you have core 14, so that's the 14th 
14 highest most traded pairs, and then all 28 pairs. And these are there's more than 28 pairs, but there's 28 non-exotic pairs. So there's the 28 standard pairs, and then I believe there's 36 uh, exotic pairs. So combined, there are a total of 64 foreign exchange currency pairs. All right, but it's only 28 that are standard. The other ones are exotics. I won't even get into those, uh, you know, for as of right now. You can also look at just AUD pairs, just CAD pairs, just euros, just Great Britain pounds, just Japanese yen, just NZ dollar, you know, New Zealand dollar pairs. All right, but the most common way is to come up here and select the own pair list. All right, then you come up here under time frames to use. If you guys have watched any of my videos, I only teach on four time frames: the minute five, mainly the minute fifteen, the H one, which is the hour one, and the H four, which is the hour four. So what I do is I delete everything but those four. So I delete all of that. I delete M thirty. I delete M one. You want to make sure you delete even the commas so it doesn't mess anything up. So you see here, I have M5, comma, M15, comma, H1, comma, H4. All right, M's and H's are capital, and there's a comma, no spaces, just a comma. Next is your own pairs. All right, so now I wanna double click this and delete everything there. I wanna add my own pairs. So I'm gonna add these 10 pairs down here, the 10 that I recommend. Like if you wanna add anything else, you can, that's fine. Uh, GBP, JPY, GBP, USD. When you type these in, you must type them in exactly the way your broker has them. So if your broker calls them, uh, if you got a dot .pro or dot .var account, you wanna make sure you say the pair dot .pro. If your broker has a plus sign next to them, put the currency pair with the plus sign. The exact way your broker has them is how you need to input them, otherwise it will not work for that currency pair. To find it, again, you remember what I said, go to view symbols. Under view symbols, you'll see the label for how your broker has them. All right, you put them in, no spaces, comma. GDP USD, no space, comma. GDP AUD, no space, comma. GDP NZD, no space, comma. GDP CAD, no space, comma. GDP CHF, no space, comma. Oops. comma uh now we've had the six pound pairs next is the four euros e u r uh gbp no space comma e u r j p y no space comma e u r a u d no space comma e u r n z d nothing out of that after you put the last one in don't worry about a, a comma or a space, all right? So now you got the time frames and your currency pairs. Next, you wanna come down here and make sure that allow alerts is true, all right? Alerts notify is true, all right? Now, and this next one is very important. Template for new chart. Double click on default and type in capital A, capital I, capital R, capital O. So arrow, all caps. Because when you click on the time frame of the currency pair you want to look at, it's going to bring up that time frame with the arrow chart already on it. So it's a nice little shortcut as long as you have arrow here. And then last but not least, ADR num days. So area ADR num, num of days. Select, double click that and put 10. All right, double click that and put 10. When you've done that, select OK. All right, give it a second to refresh. Once you've done that, make sure you see a smiley face. If you don't see a smiley face here, you wanna make sure that you have auto op trading button turned on. Auto trading button needs to be turned on for you to see a smiley face, all right? Auto trading button needs to be turned on for you to see a smiley face. Once you've seen the smiley face there, then a couple of seconds here, you see everything popped up, all right? Now, before I go over the dashboard, uh, let me come back and look at any questions real quick here. Uh, can you access the arrow dashboard from your phone? Will it work like no more? Yes, it will, as long as you have the virtual private server or the remote desktop 
on your phone. So for example, let me show you guys. So I'm only logged into two uh, on my phone, two of the three, but you can see there they are. Here's my personal one, which is stuff I'm working on. And then here's the AP one. All I gotta do is click on that one and it takes me straight to the same chart you guys just saw. So literally I have access to the exact same chart on my phone as I do my computer. So if I hit sale on my phone and I come to my computer, it's gonna be the same thing because guess what? It's the same virtual private server you have access to just on a different device, all right? If you do not have the options, I just talked about it. If you do not have the options, you need to submit a ticket explaining what you need. If you need those templates, that's it. You submit a ticket for the templates. All right. Now, if you're talking about something else, please let me know. All right. My symbol category only has four pairs. That's fine. That means you're using a different broker. Different brokers are going to have a different categories. If your if your uh, broker has just Forex pairs, then go to Forex pairs and find everything else. Your broker dictates what you see there. All right. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to need a different broker, again, I can't talk about those here. Just send me a direct message. Uh, I'll hook you up with, with the broker I have. All right. Uh, from a broker standpoint, for those who want to know why people use different brokers, I cannot recommend a specific broker, but this is why I would recommend it. I can recommend to you what you should look for in a broker. Number one, you need to look for a broker that has low spreads, all right? That's the difference between the price, the bid and the ask. I'll show this on the chart here in, in a minute. Low spreads means you're gonna get into profit faster and you're gonna pay less fees. So that's, that's number one. Number two, you wanna find a broker that has multiple options. So uh, for example, there's some brokers that, that they don't allow you to trade crypto. There's some brokers that don't have index pairs. So indices, you know, the US 30s, the, S&P 500, the NAS 100. There are some brokers that don't let you trade precious metals like gold and oil and silver. So you make sure you have a broker that lets you trade everything, even stocks. We caught uh, 75 pips on Amazon. I did a uh, live New York session on Thursday last week uh, and we were on and we caught 75 pips on Amazon or 73, 73 pips on Amazon. So that was a good trade. Uh, but if you didn't have stock, you know, if your broker didn't offer it to you, you're not gonna have access to it, all right? And then last but not least, the third thing, your broker needs to be an A book broker, all right? An A book broker. Now, an A book broker is, there aren't many. You know, most brokers are B book or C book brokers. A B book or C book broker is gonna trade against you. They're gonna manipulate the spread, all right? So when you go into a trade, uh, before it hits take profit, both your bid line and your ask line must go below or above your take profit, depending on if you're in a sell or buy, all right, before your trades close out in profit. What a lot of brokers like to do is when you get close to hitting take profit, they'll open up your spread. So only one line goes below it, the other one stays above it, that way your trade never closes out. Or they'll manipulate the chart, make, you know, let's say there's a little spike because the news comes out, they may spike it five times higher all because they can do so, because they control their charts. A B book and C book broker, if you make money, that money comes out of their bank account. If you lose money, it goes into the bank account. On an A book broker, they don't manipulate spreads, they don't manipulate your trades, and when you make money, it comes from the real Forex market. It comes from the liquidity providers, what the banks are using. So you're trading the real Forex market. When you trade on a B book or C book broker, all you're doing is trading against that broker. Their charts or the data you're using is coming from the liquidity provider, but not the money. The money is going back and forth between you and them. All right, so guess what? They're going to do what's necessary. Just like a casino, the house always wins. All right, so make sure, you know, those are the three things that I'd recommend that you look for in a broker. Uh, also, if your broker does have cryptocurrency, uh, make sure that they allow you to trade that cryptocurrency on the weekend. A book and B book brokers will give you access to cryptocurrency, but you can't trade it on the weekends. There's a lot of people today, or actually over the weekend, today and yesterday, that made a lot of money and caught thousands of pips. I mean thousands. Uh, we had some people catch over 10,000 pips in one day. 10,000 pips in one day. 
trading Bitcoin yesterday. All right. So uh, a book broker, low spreads and multiple trading asset class options. All right. Uh, to contact me, I uh, see a private message. You can contact me on Instagram. I'll put my handle here in the chat for everybody to see it. Uh, Nate's Instagram is at Nate got the bag. And then the same thing at Nate got the bag on Telegram. So in the, in the, um, arrow bag chat, you can just click on my, one of my messages and then go ahead and send me a direct message. So I'm on Telegram as well. All right. So you can find me. All right. Is there a way to speed the VPS or do I need a faster computer? So if the VPS is slow for you, it's probably either your computer or your internet connection. The VPS, all the bugs have been fixed out of, of my software, as well as the issues on the VPS side. So now the is humming. Now the software is moving at a blazing speed. Um, and so if you're having some struggles, you uh, either you know, need to look at your internet provider and your, your, uh, your connection speed or uh, your computer, you know, all right. All right, so we've answered all those questions. Let's go back into the chart here. And I will walk you through what the dashboard does. All right, let me turn this navigator off. The dashboard has a lot of information on here for you, a lot of valuable information. All right, number one is gonna tell you, you know, it's gonna show you here on the side, the symbols you selected. So I have these 10 here. All right, next is gonna tell you the spread. The spread. So let me open up a chart real quick so you guys can see that here. Uh oh. We'll close all these because guess what? I got the dashboard open. And the dashboard is looking at all the pairs. Instead of having 10 different charts open, now the dashboard is looking at all of them on one chart. So let me close all these here. All right. I'll leave this one open because this is the last, this, this chart here has it on there. All right. So as you can see here, there's a red line here and a white line. All right. That is your, the red line is your ask. So anytime you hit buy, it'll automatically put an entry at that red line. The white line is your bid. So every time you hit sell, it'll automatically put a, your green line, your green data line, which is your entry line, and put it where the white line is at, all right? So the gap in between those is your spread, all right? So let's imagine that your take profit is right here. Both the red line and white line have to go below that purple line for your trade to close out in profit. All right. And even if, you, even if this is, your, you know, uh, we move it up here. If your take profit was up here, then both the red line and white line have to go above it before it closes out in profit. So the wider that spread is, the longer it takes for you to get into profit. All right. And the longer it takes for you, the trade to close out. And that's what the brokers do. They, they manipulate when your price gets to take profit. They open up that spread. All right. So look out for that. All right, so let's close this here. Let's go back and look at it. So your spread, it'll tell you what your current spread is. All right, I've got mine set so that if your spread is three or higher, it'll be red. So you see on GBP NZD, the spread right now is over three pips. That's pretty rough. You want to be looking to take trades on the Forex pairs at under three pip spread. All right, under three pip spread. On the indexes and gold and cryptocurrency is different, so don't worry about those. 
All right, I don't teach on those. That's something you gotta, you'll, you'll learn you know, as you get more experience. As beginners, I don't teach about the uh, higher um, volatile pairs. All right, so that's what the spread is. This just indicates to you what the actual spread is currently at right now, all right? You can see most of them are good to go. They're white, indicating they're good to go. You know, you can enter in on those. If it's red, don't enter in. DLY open. So this tells you that since the new day started for Forex, which I can tell you the new day starts every day, uh, the market is open at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so this tells you what? This tells you if it's green, it tells you that like GDP AUD, the Great Britain pound Aussie dollar, Australian dollar is up 30 pips from where it opened up today. All right, 30 pips is green. Uh, EUR NZD, so the Euro New Zealand dollar is down 38 pips from where it opened. So it opened today and it's dropped 38 pips. That's what it tells you, all right? Giving you an idea of the direction price is trending in. So it's either gonna be green or orange. WLY open is, you guessed it, the weekly open. So it's gonna tell you, you know, luckily today is Sunday, so the day and the week opened up at the same time. After today, you know, this refreshes every day, uh, every 24 hours. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, every 24 hours. So every new day, all right? Every new day, this will refresh. All right, let me go to the chart. But this is the new day here, this dotted line. Every time on the 15 minute time frame, every time we get to a new dotted line, this is the new day, all right? So that just gives you an idea of how that currency pair is trending for the week, all right? The new week starts Sunday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next is ADR. It needs to say 10 underneath. All right, 10, if you follow the directions, when you put the, in, the input in for 10, uh, for ADR, it needs to be set to 10 days. So you're looking at the last two weeks uh, or last two rolling weeks of the ADR, all right? ADR stands for average daily range. That tells you the average number of pips that a currency pair moves every 24 hours. All right, so you can kind of get an idea of how it's gonna move. So when I see that EUR JPY has already moved 62 out of 62 pips, so it's averaging 62 pips a week, I mean a day, and it's already moved that, then that means that I don't want to enter in into any trades on that currency pair, because guess what? It's already moved high enough. It's already moved 100% of its ADR. Therefore, the probability of it moving even further for me to be able to receive you know, some substantial pips when I'm making a trade, the probability goes down, all right? Um, so that's what it tells you there. If it's green, that means that of the ADR, it is less than 50, less than 75%. What does that mean? So let's say the ADR is 100 pips. So that means whatever the currency pair is averaging 100 pips a day. If it's under 75 pips, so 75 of the 100, if prices move, 70, uh, less than 75% or less than 75 pips on that 100 ADR, then it will be green. From 75% to 90% or 89%, I'm sorry, 89.9% is going to be yellow. And then from 90% up, because it, it can go past 100%, because this can go to 75 out of 62, all right? But from nine, 90 up is gonna be red. Now you can see here, this is at 100%. 62 out of 62, all right? Last but not least are these black boxes. If you have inputted in one of your currency pairs wrong, this would be shade gray. One of these, like let's say I put in GDP NZD and I lowercase one of the letters, it will gray out the boxes for this row for GDP NZD. So if you see grayed out boxes, then you just know you inputted in something wrong and you need to go back. Either you inputted in the symbol wrong, or you had no comma, or you have a space in there. No space, comma, no space, next currency pair. All right, so either you put something in wrong, as far as the name of the symbol, you have a space, or you don't have a comma. All right.
uh, when it's time and you receive an arrow, if it's a down arrow, it's gonna light up red. So this right here lit up red. So you know that on Euro JPY, the H1 chart and the H4 chart have what? They have, you guessed it, down arrows. H4, down arrow, all right? Right there, all right? If it's a green box, that means there's an up arrow, all right? If it's blank, that's fine. If you just want to go look at it, you can go look at it. Because some of the strategies, there's 10 strategies for the arrow software. Some of the strategies do not require you to have an arrow, all right? No arrows are required to make the trade, all right? So make sure you understand which one of those strategies allow you to have one or expect you to have one and what some of the other don't, all right? And you can see under each, underneath each time frame, it has a candle timer. So it tells you in three minutes and 10 seconds, I'm going to get a new minute five candle. In three minutes, five seconds, I'm going to get a new hour candle, a new H1 candle. All right, so these are timers underneath each time frame. And if I select the time frame I want to select, so let's say we'll go to GDP NZD H1, it's going to bring me to what? It's going to bring me to the GBP NZD H1 chart, you can see here, H1 chart for GBP NZD, and it'll show you what's going on on this chart. So it's pretty cool. It monitors multiple time frames and multiple pairs all at once. You just have to put the inputs in the correct way so that it monitors it the correct way and you get your notifications. All right, now before I show how to link your notifications to your cell phone and then go over the strategy number one and then we'll be done with this call. I'm gonna check to see if we have any questions, any questions real quick. How do you pull up that screen on the MT4? Uh, Anthony, what screen are you speaking about? How can I receive cryptocurrency pairs? We already went over this. To receive cryptocurrency pairs, you have to go to view symbols Find cryptocurrency, mine says cryptos, find them, find which ones you wanna add, double click on it until the icon turns gold. Once you've done that, you'll be able to go to create new chart. You have all the cryptos you selected, all right? Same way for cryptos as it was for Forex pairs. All right, Anthony, I'm not really sure what screen on MT4 you're speaking about, so please let me know. All right, all questions answered, so let's go back to the chart. All right, now, to ensure you receive your notifications to your phone, all right, that way if you're away from your computer or whatever the case may be, or it's in another room, you can get notifications and then go look at your charts. All right, so to do so, you want to go to, uh, one, you want to have the MetaTrader 4 on the device you want to receive notifications, whether it's your phone or your tablet. Most people select their phone. And so on your phone, you want to go inside your MetaTrader 4 on your phone. And you want to select, whether you have a, a, an Android phone or iPhone, doesn't matter. You want to select settings and then chat and messages. Settings, chat, and messages. All right, chat and messages. Once you select chat and messages, it's going to bring up a blank screen here with your My Meta Quotes ID down here. My Meta Quotes ID. All right, that number you need to keep right there. Keep that. All right, next you want to come into your, your, uh, however you logged into your, 
VPS, whether it's been your desktop, your laptop, your phone, or your, or your, or, uh, your tablet, come back to your VPS, your avoid your prime VPS, come up here to tools, options, and then notifications. Under notifications, you get this screen here. Select enable push notifications, put the check mark there. Come down here to my medical ID. Type in that medical ID number here, hit test. When you hit test, you'll see a test on here. Then you know it's good to go. All right, then going forward, just go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna hit cancel though, because I don't want to receive any notifications. I, I have it coming from my other account. But you hit okay, and now you're good. Now, anytime you get a notification from the dashboard, it will send it to your phone. All right. All right. And last but not least, guys, I'm going to show you strategy number one. This is the bread and the butter for the Aero software. It is called the bag strategy. All right. The bag strategy. Bag, as you guys you know, know, is slang for getting paid, getting money. But with Aero, bag stands for bounce, arrow, go. So let's go look at it. I'm gonna pull up my favorite pair to trade, which is the Great Britain Pound Japanese Yen. So there are three rules to the strategy. Number one rule, identify the trend. So to identify the trend, well, actually, before we go over that, let me just explain what it is you're looking at here with the Arrow software. So with the Arrow software here, you're looking at a couple of things, all right? The Arrow software is nothing but a visual representation of what the market is doing that will allow you, you know, when you combine the strategies with it, it will allow you to make a highly probable trade that has a very high chance of winning, all right? So again, the Arrow software is only a visual representation of what the market is doing, which will also give you these arrows, which are potential indications of an entry. When you combine the Arrow software with the 10 strategies, it becomes a trading system. All right, trading system, because there are multiple ways to trade this software. All right, here you see that there's red zones and green zones. The red zones represent resistance or the roof, the ceiling. If I take a ball and I throw it at the ceiling, it hits the ceiling and does what? It bounces back down. The green zones represent, represent support or the floor. I take that same ball and I throw it on the ground, it does what? It hits the ground and bounces back up. That is all price does every day. It bounces off the ceiling, back down to the floor, off the ceiling, back up to the ceiling. I'm sorry, off the floor, up to the ceiling and back down again. All it does every day is bounce off the floor and the ceiling. The trick is to know when to enter into the trade while after it has bounced, all right? Number two rule, I'm sorry, not number two, uh, let me explain the rest of the software here. That's what, that's what the, uh, uh, those are. Uh, you see there's this blue line here, all right? That's the arrow moving average. A moving average just gives you a visual representation of what? Of what direction price has been currently going. Price is these candlesticks, these squiggly lines as people call them. These symbols here are what we call candlesticks, all right? So the blue line kind of, you see price is going up. The blue line is going up. All right. Price will come down. The blue line comes down. See what's that? So there's a re re visual representation. When price is what? Above the moving average, the candlesticks are going to be green and moving up. When they're below the moving average, they're typically going to be red and moving down. All right. You have the arrows. There are three types of arrows. Even though they all look the same when they pop up, there's three strategies to tell the arrows when to pop up. All right, three strategies. All right. Also, uh, you see here this gray shaded area. Happens every day, gray shaded area. The gray shaded area is what we call the money zone. The money zone, all right, the money zone is the best time to trade, all right? It's from 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Though Those are the best 12 hours of the day to trade the foreign exchange market. Why? 
because 80% of all Forex volume, you know, Forex right now is doing about $7 trillion a day in transactions. So 80% of that $7 trillion in transactions is done or happens inside the gray shaded area every day. All right. Uh, next you have, and last but not least, you have the arrow pip counter. So when you have our multiple trades, and I'll show you a couple of those, it highlights the currency pair is green or red. So if the currency pair is highlighted green, that tells you that you are in that trade for a buy. If the currency pair is highlighted red, it, that means you're in that trade for a sale. Next to it, it'll say a positive, it'll say a plus number, plus one, or it'll say negative one. So that lets you know, are you up or are you down on your trade? And then overall, your arrow pip counter will tell you, are you up or down on all your trades? So if you're in mul multiple trades, it would do the math for you and let you know it, you know, what your overall profit or loss is. Like you can be in 13 trades and six of them are positive and seven are negative. And then overall you're negative. Or you can be in five trades, all be positive, and this will be positive. And it'll just tell you, are you plus or minus whatever it is uh, you're trading, you know, overall pips. All right. That is the arrow software. Uh, again, when you combine it with the strategies, it is an actual trading system. All right. So strategy number one, the bag strategy. Let's zoom out. Rule number one is identify the trend. To identify the trend, you zoom out all the way. Right here, you got the zoom button here. Zoom out, zoom in. They're, they're little magnifying glasses. If you have more red zones than green zones, you are in a downtrend and you need to only take sales. All right. Again, if you're more experienced, you know how to counter trend trade. Sure. You know, go ahead and do so. If you have a strategy uh, that works, hey, feel free to do so. You know, the arrow software is here as a guide for you. Uh, the strategy is there for those who want to learn them um, and those who are new, who don't have a strategy. Those who do have a strategy, hey, feel free to add your strategy in with the software. It can only make it better is what I've been told for those who already have a strategy and they don't use mine. Arrow just allows them to understand the overall trend better and where there's levels of support and resistance so they know when not to get in. Um, all right. So rule number one was identify the trend. Zoom out all the way and count your zones. It's as simple as that. You don't need to worry about top-down analysis. I don't need to go look at the day chart, the hour chart, make sure everything's going in the right direction. No. One chart at a time. All right. You just traded min 15. Trade the min 15. So once you've identified a trend, number two is, zoom back in, only trade inside the money zone. So only take trades inside a money zone. Because again, we want to trade in the direction of the money. That's why we identify a trend. And we want to trade with the money. That's why we trade inside the money zone. All right. Rule number three. Only take bag entry trades in the direction of the trend inside the money zone. All right. Now, what does that mean? A bag entry trade. We're in a sale, right? We want sales only. There's more red zones than green zones. So what we're waiting for is a bag entry. All right. All right, you see here price bounced out this zone up here. Now bounce means either the, the, this thin line here. If you see this thin, let me zoom in real quick. On these candlesticks, you have the full body. That's when you when it's thick. That's where the full body is at. Where it's real skinny, that's the wick. These skinny lines are the wick. So that means price used to be there and it came back the other way. All right, price used to be there. All right, so you see here, this week and this week and this next week, all three in a row, all touch this level. All right, now you're waiting for price to come down below the moving average and get a candle that is red. That is a bag entry move, a bounce, arrow, go. On this trade, you got an arrow on this, on this uh, candle, which means you get in next candle. All right, you put your stop loss at 40 pips, take profit at 20. That's what I recommend. 
uh, for proper risk management, but you can utilize, of course, whatever it is you want to do. All right. Uh, once you have it there, you know, you can see here, it dropped all the way down 68 pips. 68 pips. All right. Off that bag entry move. 68 pips. All right. That is the bag entry for a sale. Let me find it for a buy for you real quick so you can see what the buy looks like. Here's your JPY. All right, here it is for buy. Zoom out all the way. Actually, here's a, a no trend. So you see here, you zoom out all the way, you have three green and three red. All right, you have three green and three red, which first thing you want to do is take your crosshair right here, measure the distance between the two inner, the two inner zones. There are 70 pips between the two inner zones. Therefore, that means you can trade in both directions. So if you get a bag entry from the top, you can take a sale. If you get a bag entry from the bottom, you can take a buy. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. As you can see here, you had price bounced. Came up, you got an arrow, into the trade. There we go. So this arrow is not gonna pop up until this candle closes. So the candle is pointing to when it closes and the next candle opens, you can enter into a trade on that candle. 40 pips stop loss, 20 pips take profit. Unless you wanna do more, that's fine. Review, I recommend 20 pips, get in, get out. Start doing that from the beginning just to kind of get your feet wet, understand it, before you start trying to take more trades. If you do wanna take longer trades, uh, make sure to watch the video strategy number two, which shows you how to take trades and hold them a lot longer, as well as um, on higher time frames. All right, that is strategy number one, the foundation. Let me stop sharing so you can get any questions. Is there a recording of this in the Telegram so I can refer to it once support fees of my broker and arrow buttons? Yes. So if you go on the Arrow Announcements channel, or better yet, you can go to uh, YouTube and go to Avoya Prime's channel on YouTube. All of my videos are there. All, every Sunday night video I've done since, I, since we launched Arrow back in November 25th, uh, Thanksgiving Day of last year, all, as well as all my live trade sessions and the live trade sessions of the other educators. All right. Why is the stop loss twice as much as the take profit? Great question. People over leverage. Beginners want to get in there and see, they see everybody making this big money and they want to go put a fat lot size on. So it is there to ensure that people are utilizing proper risk management. All right, it is there to use proper risk management. Now, there are other ways to trade with it. So if you're gonna buy, you know, you can put your stop loss underneath the zone if they bounced off of. If you're in a sale, you can put your stop loss above the zone that it bounced off of. All right, but that is why it's there. All right, one to give some of the currency pairs a little wiggle room to move, but in two, it's mainly there because people that are brand new like to over leverage. All right, therefore, this is a way to control their leverage. I mean, sorry, control their accounts from being blown because they're now having to be cognizant or conscious of what lot size they put on. All right, plus, here's the beautiful thing those who that whole thought process of you got to have a risk to war ratio of one to three, one to five, one to 10, one to 25. Those guys have winning percentages less than 60%, 50, 55, 53, 56%. Now they are profitable because they do use tight stop losses, but they lose more trades. The arrow software, people are winning over 80% of the time. Again, past results do not, uh, are not indicative of future results. I'm just letting you know what people are, win are winning with. Strategy number one of what I showed you, the beta test group that actually uh, beta tested this software before we rolled it out to the company, they were winning 
at least 85% of the time or more. So the beginners up to the experienced traders were winning 85% or more. The or more part came with those people that were a lot more experienced. Uh, they understood uh, a lot more of what they were looking at. The, you know, the individuals that were brand new, they were winning at least 85% of the time just following the rules. So you have a high winning percentage, guess what? You don't need to worry about having a very, very tight stop loss. That's the reason why people get stopped out so often by having a tight stop loss and trying to trade a Great Britain pound pair that has a lot of volatility. So it's all about using proper risk management. Now, what is proper risk management? Risk, proper risk management is making sure that you are only risking a small amount of your account per trade. So I recommend trading with 0.01 lot size for every $100 in your account. So if you have a $100 account, you'd be trading with a 0.01 lot size. If you have a $500 account, you should be trading with a 0.05. A $1,000 account, 0 0.1. All right, a $10,000 account, a 1.00. All right, if you use the ratio of 0 0.01 for every $100 in your account, you will have to lose 1,000 pips straight before you blow your account. All right, that is proper risk management. All right. I don't see any more questions. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? If not, we will end the call. You can go into the Arrow Bag Chat or go to Avoya Prime's YouTube channel and find all the videos. So if you're getting your, uh, if you're getting uh, support to fix your uh, your VPS, then you can go straight back to that video. This video here will be uploaded to the tele I mean to the uh, uh, YouTube channel tomorrow. All right. All right, question about the money zone. So right now with the dashboard, you cannot change the, the, you cannot change the, uh, the money zone. I'm going to be putting in multiple templates so that you can find the correct template for your, for your time zone. Right now, you cannot change it, all right? So once that's announced, I'll let you guys know. I'm gonna put up a new version of the dashboard. Uh, the next version is gonna fix a couple bugs. And I'm also gonna add multiple templates based on different time zones of brokers so that People can choose the correct template. Uh, usually I just give access to people to let them do it themselves, but due to security, we cannot allow customers to have access to the templates folder. All right. Uh, other than that, man, Gerald, man, I appreciate it, man. Uh, other than that, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys joining. Uh, I apologize for having to push it back an hour. Um, the first live trade session of the week starts tomorrow with the Hawkeye group, they're more advanced. So uh, if you wanna get under and see how things work, 7.30 um, a.m. Eastern time, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Get on with them and they'll go through, uh, they'll go through with you, all right? Other than that, guys, if you're gonna trade tonight, make sure to trade responsibly. All right, if you're new, use your demo account. And otherwise, guys, I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Thanks. Thank you.